So good fats, bad fats, you know, like any other nutrition discussion where you're talking about good and bad or good versus evil, uh, there are problems inherent to thinking this way. So you will see the term good fats and you will see the term bad fats in like popular media headlines all the time. Um, you'll see eat this, not that kind of articles where it's saying replace this kind of fat with that kind of fat, especially with the popularity of keto dieting right now, which is, is super high fat, but keto dieters tend to think that they can eat as much fat as they want um, with no consequences as long as they eat the good fats or the right fats. The biggest problems with this kind of thinking is that it completely takes the responsibility away from the dieter to actually understand um, how different fats contribute to health or feed into the diet or how they should be avoided. So for example, there are things, uh, there are fats that are, that are clearly bad, um, like trans fats, most trans fats um, are clearly detrimental to health and we should avoid them as much as possible. And that's why you'll see trans fat free on a lot of packaged foods. Um, you'll see a lot of restaurants are trying to reduce the trans fat that goes into their food, that kind of thing, because they're clearly bad. Um, there are exceptions even there, like the trans fats that, that uh, you see naturally occurring in dairy products. We don't really know if they're good or bad at this point. Um, some things like that. Clearly, that's in a category on its own. We don't need to think about it. We don't need to make a decision um, on a case-by-case -case because there is not really a case where they're going to contribute to our health. We shouldn't go out of our way to get them. Um, other fats, though. Like, say, if I tried to say that saturated fat is good or bad, if I just apply a blanket statement and I say saturated fat is always bad, um, I'm going to have to avoid a whole set of foods and large food groups if I want to cut back my saturated fat intake. Now, if instead I think what is bad about saturated fats, um, is, is it just that if I eat a gram of saturated fat, my body's going to deteriorate and I'll have heart disease and all these other things. Or is the problem largely to do with dosage, which it is. Um, saturated fat is going to be kind of healthy for you up to an extent, or at least tolerable up to an extent, um, but it shouldn't make up most of your fat calories. Uh, so there, if I say saturated fat is always bad, I'm always going to avoid saturated fat. I can get stuck kind of cutting out food groups that have many other health benefits. Like for example, a lot of animal products, a lot of meat, um, there's going to be a lot of saturated fat in meat, uh, but there are also a lot of other good things that are hard to get without consuming meat. Um, other micronutrients and minerals, vitamins, that kind of thing, uh, that you are going to have trouble getting outside of consuming meat. So if I almost all of a sudden say red meat has lots of saturated fat, Saturated fat is always bad, therefore I can't eat red meat. I've just eliminated a whole kind of pocket of micronutrient density that I would normally be able to get. And it's not something that you have to consume every day to get the benefit of. If I have red meat once or twice a week, then I'm going to get those micronutrients. My saturated fat intake is probably low enough that it doesn't matter and everybody wins. And that's where this whole good versus bad really becomes detrimental. If I just say good, or if I just say bad, I'm not thinking about the context. I'm not thinking about what the actual problem is and trying to apply it to my life. Um, and it goes the other direction too. If I say that fat is always good, like people are saying this about um, medium chain triglycerides, MCTs, uh, you can get those in supplement form. They're also pretty abundant and really make up the uh, the greater part of coconut oil, and this is another another keto thing, another high fat thing. You can have as much MCT as you want. You can have as much coconut oil as you want because it, you know, it injects straight into your brain. It makes you smarter and uh, a better human being, and all this other fallacy stuff. But if I say that it's always good, I can also get myself into some trouble uh, because MCT oil and coconut oil. They're, they're fats. And if I consume so much of them, because I think they're so good for me, if I consume so much of them, 
that it contributes to my calorie balance in such a way that I end up gaining weight, gaining body fat, which is what's going to happen at some point. Are they still always good? Is it always good then for me to continue shoveling coconut oil into my face and saying, I'm getting healthier, I'm getting healthier, can't overdo this. Is that always good? Our MCT is always good in that case. Uh, the clear answer is no, because context is very important. And if you just apply this black and white thinking, good versus bad, good versus evil, good fat, bad fat, you just give yourself a free pass to not think about any of these things. And when you don't think about them, you miss out. You miss out on micronutrients over here because you're eliminating food groups. You're eliminating, eliminating food groups that you might want to consume. Um, you're eliminating building understanding about how calorie balance is the thing that contributes to weight gain and weight loss. So there are lots of blind spots that you can come upon when you think that way. And it's much better to look at any food group, any macronutrient, um, any fat source, and say, how is this good? How is it bad? Where does it cross that threshold? How can I use it in my life? Because a lot of things there will be room for in your diet. You can still enjoy them. You can still get the benefits of them. And you can still pull back the drawbacks enough that they're safe, they're fine for you. Um, but you have to think about it. So try to avoid this black and white thinking, this good versus evil thinking. Um, try to avoid this discussion of good fat versus bad fat. Both in your own head and maybe more importantly when talking to others. Um, this comes up talking to a partner, uh, talking to a training partner, talking to coworkers. But if I'm kind of spreading this propaganda about fat, if I go to the office and I say, coconut oil is always good, we should put it in coffee, we should put it on everything we consume, I'm just kind of feeding into a problem. It's Nutrition doesn't really work like that. Um, it's a lot more nuanced than that. And it's much better if you can just have an open discussion and say, you know, I heard that uh, coconut oil does this. Um, and then you can also say, but there are also st still nine calories per gram, so we should probably watch how much we eat. It's not hard to find that middle ground. It just takes a little more effort. So apply that effort, apply it to your own diet, apply it to the discussions you have, and everyone's going to live a better life because of it. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe on this video. And let me know if you have any questions, comments, leave them below. Absolutely, you can get the discussion going. Talk soon.